Hello everyone and welcome back to my complete career run through of Kerbal Space Program 0.23 and we have landed someone on the moon, we have landed someone on Ike and we have landed someone on Gilly. I actually haven't landed anybody on Minmus yet. I did uh, the biome check on Minmus from, uh, from orbit but I haven't landed anybody on there but what I'm really hankering for is to go somewhere I have never gone before and namely Drez. I've never landed on Drez, I've never even approached Drez, I've never actually even cared for Drez. It, when, when I think about what plan I should come up with, uh, what I should do in the next episode, I never think about Drez. So Drez, Drez is now on my mind. However, Drez is not in the right position for us to transfer to it. I would estimate that we need at least another month, uh, at least 30 more days before Drez would be in the right position. So that, I mean, I could just time warp that, pick one of the flags and time warp, and uh, we'd be in the right position. However, it's worth noting that Jewel is in the right position. And that's interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, it takes only a little bit more energy to get to Jewel than it does to get to Drez. Drez takes about uh, a round trip using the home and transfer. Drez would take a little bit more than twice the amount that we took to get to Duna. So it's a big difference, but the difference between Jewel and Drez is not that much. It's especially not that much because of what happens once you get there. Around Drez, you'll need to decelerate on your own. There is no uh, atmosphere to slow you down. Jewel, on the other hand, you can air break, uh, air break around Jewel. Use Jewel's atmosphere in order to slow you down. Uh, the complication with Jewel is that you then have to transfer to one of the moons, which takes extra energy. So, th there are pros and cons of both sides. Drez has the really low gravity. Uh, Jewel has moons that have very low gravity, but uh, transferring to them is uh, interesting business. Uh, if you're going to air break, air break around uh, Jewel, then transferring around the, uh, to them is tricky, though, though certainly possible. So these are all plans. Uh, let's actually go to the tech tree, see where we're at and what technologies we should buy and then judge from there perhaps. Okay, now one thing I want if I'm going to be going on these really long missions is gotta be nuclear propulsion. So let me just get that off right off the bat. And don't worry, I do remember that I've left Jeb sitting on Duna. I want to get a rover to him at some point so that he can uh, have some fun over there but that's not a huge priority right now. I might want the docking ports because if we're going to have a nuclear stage, that nuclear stage is not going to land, it's not our lander. We're going to want to have that be a stage that remains in orbit while the lander goes to the surface of whatever we happen to be landing on. So that's a thought. Um, uh, I'm not going to touch these yet. Well, you know, uh, drag shoots could be interesting, drog shoots. And uh, heavy landing struts could be interesting, but this one, the airplane parts, I have no incentive to get right now. Not if we're going to be doing far-flung missions. Here are the rover parts. So that that would be when we do the business with with uh, Duna. Uh, solar rays and battery banks. I think I can do with the batteries we've got. And. Uh, yeah, the ion propulsion isn't necessary. Uh, I can't see what this is. Uh, no, pro parts are useless. I can't see what this is, though, and that's bothering me. It, it wants me to get this technology before I get to see what this is, so that's annoying. What's this one? Well, this is more experiments. Could get that. Mm. I guess I'll be a good person and start filling out the rest of this portion. Yeah, I, I guess I'll just get them. Alright, let's see what we've got now. Oh, high altitude flight, I should have guessed. Yeah, nothing useful there. Not for what we were planning on. Um, well, let's get the docking port. Oh, that's just a small one, huh? Well, that's not going to be useful. I, I can't deal with just having the small one. For the quad coupler is good. 
quad coupler might be interesting. Especially since we don't have the mainsail yet. But while we're going to places, maybe I should get the gravioli detector. Oh, I'm so indecisive. You know what? None of these is really going to help us with our mission. Uh, these cans are too heavy. I'm not going to use one of these huge lander cans. I guess these docking ports and couplers and such will be best. No, I don't think I have enough. Uh, these are nice, but I don't have enough to get them right now. Yep, I think I'm gonna hold on this now. We've got our nuclear rocket. Oh, maybe I, maybe you know, uh, in preparation for uh, getting the rover to Jeb, I'll, I'll buy the field science one. All right. So let's go to the VAB and see what I can uh, put together. Now remember, we need roughly the same thing for for Drez as we do for do uh, for Jewel. Even though we can arrow break around Jewel, we need to transfer to one of its moons. So that that pretty much will take the rest of the uh, Delta V that we would have needed to air break around Drez. So it's going to be a similar situation. I'm. I've finally got the three-person command pod, but for this mission, I think I'm going to stick to my normal configuration, which is having that, having a science junior, having the two like this, obviously having some parachutes. We're only really going to land in one place, so we only need one accelerometer. Let's put that in the middle. Some extra thermometers are helpful. I think I get more thermometer readings than anything else. Uh, that doesn't look right. Okay. That's fine. These don't really do much. And as usual, I'm not going to transmit anything. I'm going to bring it all back. Uh, so, now's the question. If we go to Drez, the gravity is so low that we could probably be alright. Oh, we've already got this docking port. So, here's the thing. Normally uh, with this, uh, if we were going to a slightly heavier body, I would slap one of these on here. Right. But, I don't think that's necessary. This can carry 5 tons on uh, Kerbin, but Drez has roughly one ninth the gravity of Kerbin. So that means that this rocket would be able to deal with 45 tons at most. Uh, we want some margin on that. So uh, 45 tons at most. But here we've got a 4.5 ton tank and let's say 2 tons at the top here. And that's that's being conservative about it. Uh, so that's about... Uh, and being ultra conservative including the mass of the engine we'll call the 7 tons so far. So, this is way overpowered right now. Hmm. The thing I want to try is maybe I should actually not have an engine at the center and instead have one of the docking ports here and then allow it to dock to, uh, to the transfer stage. Right? So that we don't have to uh, have the transfer stage land with this. Oh, I haven't put the landing struts, and I guess we will use the heavier ones now, now that we have them. Just for safety's sake. They do look a little bit garish, especially since, well, I mean, they just look bad, but... These look better. Maybe I'll go with this. I mean, we've tested this out before, it works. Oh... Uh, the, I should sneak a reaction wheel in here. That adds mass. That adds significant mass. They're 0.3 each. And if we're going to have to dock with the other portion, we need significant RCS. Significant because the other portion is not going to be controlled. Uh, unless we want to bring extra curb kerbals along. We, we're not doing any remote control parts in this, this series. so. 
Huh. Well, there's, there's the RCS tanks. Maybe we should get some more of those, actually. Yeah, I think I want four of those. Oh, this, this ladder no longer extends far enough. Okay, I think we can call that a lander. And so we've got that. Should I sneak a probe control part? Just, well, I mean, yeah. Hmm. Well, we don't have a really good inline one. We've got this small one that doesn't fit properly. On the other hand, should I just bring another Kerbal with? Uh, this only ca uh, has a mass of 0.66. Maybe I should just have another Kerbal in charge of the the transfer stage and do it like that. It's a thought. Now uh, let me uh, quickly pause and calculate the delta V of the lander right now. Huh, that was very funny. Uh, right, calculating the delta V without having a rocket. So what I was thinking was putting some of the lightweight rockets on the on the sides, just two of these, which would be more than enough. So let's do that. Uh, the Delta V on this, I mean the ISP on this is horrible though. On the other hand, it weighs much less than the, the LV-909s and allows us to put the docking port at the center. Oh, well, let's try it out. Oh, forgot something else. We are going to need a decoupler. Like so. Okay, more mass. Okay, so I calculated that in vacuum this stage gets 1948 delta V, which is more than enough to land on anything. Uh, let me just take a look at how it looks with those extended. <sighs> Could be worse. Yeah. So, uh, it, it has a thrust weight ratio of like uh, less than 0.25, just less than 0.25 with these little guys. I wonder if that's good enough. I could easily sneak four on. I want to keep the docking port at the center so I can dock with its uh, transfer stage. Yeah, I don't see why not. I, I like that they also have a little bit more vectoring. That's also a benefit of these over the LV-909s. Let's say... So now we should have something closer to 0.5 and that'll give us more versatility. If we want to land on, like, Val or something like that, would that be enough? Uh, let me uh, quickly check the wiki to see what the gravity on Val is. Yeah, gravity on Val is 0.235, so this will be more than enough. So that that's good. Uh, so we're talking about a delta V of, let's say, 1,700, to be conservative about it. And then uh, that's not including the RCS abilities. So we're good with that. Now... Yeah, the only thing is I, I wonder if I should pack the better lander legs. We'll think about that. Now, moving on to the transfer stage, uh, we're going to call uh, what we have up here, including this little can here, uh, about 10 tons. Okay, so roughly 10 tons. And we're looking to use one of the nukes. Now, this is going to have very low acceleration, so I'm going to have to moan about that. but. But that's life. Um, it'll probably be about 0.3 if I do it like this. Uh, just for looks, not. I don't think. Well, uh, the docking ports are interestingly wiggly sometimes. So maybe for structural integrity, but mainly for looks, I'm going to put struts on. Uh, does this does that lander can have uh, well it has a little bit of uh, reaction wheel power 
I actually need to get some batteries on this whole thing. So, let's see now. Ah, uh, that's getting in the way of the ladder. Um, let's just have two of them. And let's have the big ones. Uh, two of them. Alright, that's free of everything. And then uh, for him as well, but uh, not just the batteries here. Also, perhaps solar panels. Now, uh, this is the one that extends far out, and let's have four of those. Long missions, should I have solar panels? I'm thinking about sneaking a reaction wheel in here, even though there's torque in that. But uh, let, let me think about this first. So, I said 10 tons here, and... You know, just one of these is going to take forever to accelerate this. Problem is, if I put a bicoupler of some kind, if, even if I have one, let's see. Oh, well, we have a tricoupler there, and a bicoupler here. Uh, does it really. I, I'm wondering whether we're going to get proper shrouding. I, I don't think so. Well, what we could do is have two decouplers here like this, and then put a re for, Oh, I wish I had one of those that, uh, instead of going to the 1.25 meter, it goes to the 2.5 meter. Because otherwise you're going to have to do something like this. Uh, come on. Oh, I've got... Where is the other one? There we go. Yeah, something like this, which is unfortunate. And this is getting pretty tall, too. And, you know, I don't like the wiggles that I get when I build something tall like this. So, uh, you know what I'm contemplating. I'm contemplating the usual format where I put them on the side. It's usually better just to have one nuke. But it's also better to be able to hit those maneuver nodes properly. And uh, if you just have one nuke and it's accelerating you very slowly, there's a high probability that you're not going to hit the maneuver node properly. So, let's just go for it. And if we're going to put two of them on, it's going to be pretty heavy. I'm going to sneak another reaction wheel. And actually, now that we have a larger vehicle here, maybe I should sneak it here. So let's pretend that that's our spacecraft right now, and see what kind of Delta V this stage, with that as the payload, gets. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I need to fix a strut here. Okay, so I'm getting... 4,800 ish and that's barely enough for a round trip to Jewel and back. I don't know how it's going to be for uh, for the tra moon, uh, transfer to the moons of Jewel or for air braking around Drez or anything like that. So that's a little bit of a worry. Hmm. And it's already 26 tons we're talking about here. So I'm going to need to build a rocket that can lift 26 tons, which is going to be a trick. Because, uh, again, we don't have mainsails. We have the skippers at best. We can now uh, put things together a little bit more interestingly with these connectors. And also uh, this quad coupler. So I'll have to think about that. Hmm. And what we're going to do is, uh, I did note in the beginning that we 
I haven't been to Minmus. I haven't landed on Minmus. So we're going to test all this out to Minmus first, just for you to know. I'm not going to try and send this on an interplanetary mission right off the bat. Um, whew. Well, anyway, we're obviously going to need a decoupler here. Perhaps we can rely on the main stage to do part of our burn to Jewel. Or perhaps I need to sneak another tank on this, like uh, like this. And what might happen is that after my mission to Minmus, I'll make further calculations and refine how this should look. Okay, I think that's that's what I'm going to do. Uh, these outer pods probably need struts here, like so. All right, so 26 tons, the rocket probably should be around 260 tons. It can be less than that, but that's uh, the ballpark figure. So, if we put two of these tanks here, that's 36 tons plus 26 is 64. It's pretty heavy already. Now, let me go with my old trick, and this, uh, I should probably do one at a time, not eight. Okay, so, aha, aha, okay. There you go, and if we stick one in the middle, that's, uh, that's Falcon 9 for you, basically. Uh, yeah, I think Falcon 9 has this configuration. And uh, you know what? Traditionally, the one in the middle is not vectoring. Oh, I, I put the non-vectoring ones. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, I'm probably going to regret doing that, but yeah. Yeah, on these uh, multiple rocket bottom stages the outer ones are the vectoring ones and the inner one is not that's often the case and that's what we have here I don't know if that's true of the Falcon 9 though so we've got 9 and each of them gets let's say 20 uh, tons so the whole thing can carry 180 tons. So, uh, well, heck, let's slip another tank here. We're already quite a ways to my estimate of uh, 260. This is hanging a bit uh, low. But I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Of course, I could slip another tank in. Um, and we might need that. Well, I can't say that doesn't look better. Structural reinforcement. I know people don't like struts, but you know what? Uh, since I'm not actually testing these before launching them, maybe uh, erring on the side of strutting is helpful. And especially when it comes to these SAS units, which love to detach from things. And of course, this is fully stocked, so uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement is not an option. Okay, this looks like a pretty reasonable main stage. Now, obviously, this is not the not going to be enough to get everything into orbit and on its way. So, again, now this is no longer 26 tons. This is now 35 tons. Yeah. And so the entire rocket has to be bigger now that I've made that 35 tons, but since I've uh, estimated that this whole thing is going to be pretty good already, uh, I'm not too worried about that. So... Yeah, I'm still doing math in my head. 35... I'm gonna say... that this is uh, 54, and that the rockets themselves are about another 15. So this part is about 70. So this whole stack right now 
is roughly 105 tons. Which is good. That's that's fine. Not worried about that at all. Now, of course, we need side boosters. And I'm gonna put four... No, not, not this. Like that. Like this. Gotta put four. Uh, Koyu's style, right? Uh, my Koyu's rocket. And with the skippers. Okay. My math in my head says that this should work. I'm going to mount the skippers a little bit lower. The boosters a little bit lower. So that we can get nose cones on. Uh, do we have the nice nose cones yet? No? Alright, well we're gonna have to do the ugly thing and put these. Though, more efficient because they actually weigh less. So, actually the combination of these adapters and these little nose cones weigh less. But they look horrible, so... That's a problem. Now again, uh, being overly cautious. Struts first. And also I'm thinking about the uh, Separatrons. Yeah, Separatrons. Now the key to this is figuring out where the center of mass of this thing will be. And it's actually lower than where the decoupling point is. Ooh, they're, they're getting pretty close to these rockets too. Huh. Oh, that's gonna be tough. That looks like it's even clipping, which could uh, cause a disaster. Now, on my Koyu's rockets, I have a little thing that I do. Similar to this. Uh, yeah. Ah, now that those struts don't work anymore. But this could be bad. Um, that system was tested very well. And this will be the first time I'm trying this. So, yes, yes, people who hate struts, I'm going to use more struts. I can delete them once I figure out that this is stable enough. But uh, I'm nowhere near figuring that out yet. And I'm going to sneak in another SAS module. Now fuel feeding needs to be a little bit interesting. Uh, I want this to feed into this one. And then I want these to feed into the main. Okay. Whew, this could be really, really bad. <laughs> Separatrons, well now that I've uh, put these off to the side here, I'm not too worried about adding Separatrons. Really on the Koyu's rocket, that was meant to make sure that they flop off in the right direction. Uh, in the particular way that uh, would imitate the... the what you got? Uh, what's that effect called? Uh, named after the Russian designer of it, of the Soyuz rocket. Oh dear. Actually, the R7, entire R7 family. Anyway, uh, moving right along, we need launch clamps. If I remember the name, I will be sure to mention it. It's the particular way that the boosters on the R7 family fall off, including the Soyuz rocket. Okay, um, we have one of the SAS modules here, so I don't think I need to slip another one there. Uh, these don't need strutting because they don't have much weight on top of them. Lander can... We'll have a Kerbal. Top one has a Kerbal. They dock together. It has RCS, so it can do that. This will have reaction wheel power, so it can turn towards that one. Parachutes are on. Power is on. I'll let, let me action group the solar panels. Yeah, I think I've got everything. Staging. All of our main stack fires. 
those decouple decouple nukes I wonder if I have enough power to get into orbit actually I'm not power fuel I haven't actually calculated the delta V of this stage yet however this is very similar to the Koyu's rocket and the Koyu's rocket can get a payload of 60 tons into orbit this is 35 so I'm hoping that's about right that this is good enough uh, we don't need these decoupling here oh let's see come on it's not letting me get this on top of that okay um, I thought I could scroll this thing but I guess because that's already the top and this is going to be a docking port situation so I need to make sure that there's no crossfeed can I do that here now with uh, tweakables no that would have been helpful though being able to disable crossfeed in the VAB is a feature that I would like so that's that's a thing but otherwise these decouple and then those fire and then this decouple alright everything looks good to go let's try this out on Minmus let's call this however um, oh we're, we're on theta well let me just uh, go with uh, the first one I can think of lambda Latino. Lambda. Alright, so this will be our lam Lambda craft. And who's going to be in it? I think the command pod... Uh, well, I have a thing for Merman Kerman, but I think uh, Merman... Well, yeah, Merman Kerman was the one who was able to get us, get us off of the moon. So that's fine. And I'm going to pair him up with Wildred. Alright, Merman and Wildred. Sounds like some kind of... Anyway, uh, let's just get out to launch pad and see if this whole thing works. Okay, well not the most elegant rocket I've ever built, but then again this is stock, so I have limitations. SAS is on, Thrall is up. Wildred and Merman look fine. Uh, something happened. F3 please. Oh, it's, it is the SAS module. Watch. Fuel tank. What? Oh! On top of those? Really? God, I need, uh... I need struts on that? I, I thought that wouldn't even be a big deal. Huh. You know what? I've got enough thrust vectoring on this thing. I'm going to nix the SAS modules on the top of those. I don't want to add more struts. Back to the VAB and I'm just going to take the SAS modules off of those. So that's a strange thing. I don't know why. I mean, this has a mass of 0.13 and the SAS module can't cope with that. I don't know. Seems strange. Alright, uh, let me get my crew back in order. And save that and launch it.